illegal bugging apparently was one of aim of a team which broke into the Democratic National Headquarters in Washington during the weekend, and the political backgrounds of the men charged in the case have kicked up a storm. Mary Serafin has the story. The Watergate Apartment Hotel office complex in Washington has a fortress-like appearance that is noted for its security. But the burglars penetrated that security to break into the sixth floor offices of the Democratic National Committee. They entered through a firewall door. Police have hauled the whole door away as evidence. It's known that the intruders entered the first office. Material from files there was found in their possession. Democratic spokesmen called the file information very mundane. After the break-in was detected, five men were discovered crouched around this receptionist's desk and were arrested at gunpoint. Here and in the men's rooms in the adjoining hotel, police confiscated extensive photographic and electronic eavesdropping gear, as well as several thousand dollars in consecutively numbered bills. Of those arrested, most interest has centered on James McCord of Rockville, Maryland. McCord was once an FBI agent, then worked for 20 years as a security officer for the Central Intelligence Agency. At the time of his arrest, McCord was working as a security consultant for the Republican National Committee and the Committee to Re-elect President Nixon. Democrats and Republicans have been quick to react. About, uh, currently, about five men. Uh, one of them, clearly, uh, under contract and employed by both the Republican National Committee and the campaign to re-elect the president. The other four, uh, we are not, we do not have them as clearly defined at this point. Uh, how many more are there, and how many other activities have they been engaged in, and what do they contemplate by way of activity of this nature? Uh, this, I thought, this administration was a law and order administration, and I have never seen such a crass violation of individual rights as uh, we have seen in this instance. I think this is a despicable act. There's nothing the Democrat National Committee has that I want. Uh, there's a lot of unpaid bills, but uh, we don't need to photograph those. And I really can't understand why anyone would do this. I just can't comprehend. In fact, when I read the story, I thought uh, I, to myself, uh, it's rather fruitless. I don't, even if they succeeded, uh, I could see no point in it. The Democrats are ready for their convention. Uh, they're going to be gone in July in Miami. I just couldn't put together any reason for anyone wanting to do this. Democratic presidential candidates today joined in the denunciation of the break-in at their party's headquarters. I would trust that the Department of Justice will prosecute those who have been guilty of this, uh, of this incredible act of uh, uh, political surveillance and uh, political, uh, of intrusion into a political campaign headquarters. But the very thought of this sort of thing happening, I think, uh, poisons and contaminates the whole political process. And the... So the footage that you just saw from June 19th, 1972, was one of the first national news stories that would eventually come to be known as the Watergate scandal. Over the last 50 years, it seems that scandals have frequently been given the suffix of gate, from Iran-Contra gate in the 1980s to the NFL's deflate gate. While it was a notable news story when it first broke, few Americans could have seen that it would lead to this, this image that you see on the left. The only, so, only resignation thus far of a sitting United States president. Um, as a historical item, I absolutely love this thing. Um, what in one of the most establishment-shattering moments of American political history, and it seems to have ended with a single sentence from Richard Nixon, I hereby resign the office of the President of the United States. So, how did the story turn from what was thought of at first as just a, a second-rate burglary attempt to the biggest scandal in presidential history? So first we need to understand why Nixon resigned. Simply put, Nixon believed, and in fact probably knew, that he was going to be impeached. In fact, he had been informed by members of his own political party that impeachment was all but a certainty. So, what exactly does the Constitution say about impeachment? While Article 1 um, lays out the process of impeachment, Article 2, Section 4 lays out the circumstances under which formal charges can be bought, brought by Congress against a president. So what you see here is word for word what the Constitution says, that the president, vice president, and other civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. But what does this mean? 
Well, clearly a civil officer can be impeached for bribery, accepting payment in exchange for political favors, or treason, explicitly working on behalf of a nation's adversary. But the most discussed and debated part is the high crimes and misdemeanors section, in, because, uh, in part because the Constitution does not address directly what that means. There is no list of what constitutes a high crime or a misdemeanor. Historically, this tended to mean actions in which officials abused their powers in a way that was damaging to the public good and damaging to the public trust in the office itself. But because it's not clearly defined by the Constitution, it is left to Congress to determine what constitutes an unconstitutional abuse of power. This is why impeachment is often referred to as a political process rather than a criminal process. In fact, the Constitution itself does not require clear violation of law. In contrast, if you want to think about this term high crime, think about the opposite. Think about a petty crime. A petty crime is a crime that is illegal but is not thought of as a major deal, like jaywalking. It's clearly illegal, but probably has fairly little impact um, on our system of government itself. In contrast, high crimes were those abuses of power thought to be damaging to the system itself and to the public. So, by the time we'd reached August of 1974, um, Congress had seemed, to res had seemed resigned to the fact that the president's actions had constituted an abuse of his office.